Well, look who's here. It's Perry. A very important time of the year to be discussing uh, your lawn and, and plants and leaves and that type of thing. In fact, we're going to start off with sod, and I'm very impressed. You could have brought fake sod, but no, no. You're, the, you're the real McCoy. We've got real sod here, and um, is this a good time to, to lay sod? Yeah, we were just talking about it. It's actually the best time of year to lay sod. A lot of times people ask the question, can they still lay sod at this time of year at all, or is it too late, thinking that, you know, uh, plants are slowing down in terms of their growing. But the fact is the most difficult thing about sod is getting it watered and extreme temperatures in terms of heat and things like that. You can lay sod right up until the snow flies. We can actually harvest it from the farm right up until the ground freezes. And so you're going to have, uh, you know, several weeks yet still being able to lay sod. And again, because the temperatures are cooler, it does much better when you're watering and things like that in terms of the install. Well, what about install? Any special tricks to, to put it in properly so that you know it's going to stick around for a while? Yeah, sod is very similar. Obviously, the base prep is important when you talk about using good topsoil and things like that. You want to level it off. Once we've got that done, in terms of the install, it's a lot like tile. You know, you think about it at home, you know, you're going to put your bigger pieces of tile and then you cut to the edges. The one difference with sod is you want a wider border because if the pieces are too thin, they're going to dry out against the edge. So you tend to do a border around the area you're going to lay the sod and then you cut sort of your strips to finish maybe one one row in and again that protects it from drying out because the real key with new sod is that it needs to stay wet it's been easy this year with the rain we've sure, got sure. and the cooler temperatures are going to help but you want to make sure when you install it you water it every day and fertilizing with a sod starter fertilizer is important uh, if you miss that step it's not a killer but it's definitely helpful so fertilizing is is, is important but it, water is more important than the fertilizer then that's true what ends up happening is water is the most important but obviously fertilizer has some phosphorus it'll have a higher middle number helps promote root development and that's something that's important when you're talking about transplanting new turf okay let, let's move on from turf and uh, just talk about the lawn in general. Regardless of how much water we had this year, some lawns still don't look that great. So uh, what do we need to know to uh, rejuvenate those lawns? Okay, this is a great time of year for aerating. So if you've had an older neighborhood, older lawn, high traffic locations, aeration in the fall is the most effective time. So aerating is when we take the cores, it basically you know pops them out of the ground. As we've seen, I think we understand that, i.e. it corrects compaction. And that's the biggest problem with turf. And uh, the only thing you can do is rejuvenate it by adding compost and stuff uh, where it actually works down into the soil as nutrition and you can actually improve the soil thereby improving your turf in the future. Okay let's talk about fertilizing now and possibly fertilizing your lawn and um, the application of the fertilizer is this the best thing to use? Yeah, anytime you're doing a fertilizer or seeding a broadcast spreader is the best. I brought sort of a hand one here where it sort of has a wheel idea. There are drop spreaders that people are used to I think uh, where you can kind of push a drop sure, spreader. Sure. The issue with that is sometimes you can get too much in one area you don't want to burn your lawn and so using a broadcast spreader that's got some kind of wheel where it kind of sort of again broadcast it over an area it's a little more effective you want to make sure that when you're fertilizing or even seeding that you kind of walk perpendicular to yourself so do the area back and forth this way and then you're going to walk back and forth at a 90 degree angle to the path you took before that gives you the best coverage okay so let's talk let's move on from uh, fertilizer just for we'll come back and maybe look at the numbers if we have time but uh, seed itself and how important it is to, to cover that lawn or, or not yeah, the idea of overseeding the fall is really important. You can use things like uh, maybe you have a shady area. I brought some shady turf. We've got some water star seed here. And so you can make selections based on an area as well. We actually have the water star seed, which is what you see in the turf. So you can use the same seed that is in the turf that was used to originally grow. So by overseeding, you can spread some compost and then overseed it. It'll be a way to kind of rejuvenate those patchy areas because often sod can look good, but you've got some areas that are worse than others and you can address those while still you know, spreading some compost over a wider area again sort of holistically going to improve your lawn and make the areas that are kind of driving you crazy look better now okay we're just about out of time here but let's wrap things up with uh, fertilizer and how important it is to watch for the numbers yeah, the issues with fertilizers, you know, there's fall fertilizers and they're great to use. You want to make sure that you understand the reason for a fall fertilizer formulation. You can see that first number is 15, that's nitrogen. It's a lower percentage of nitrogen and typically it's going to improve stem strength and things with that last number, which is potassium. You don't want high levels of nitrogen. Your middle summer fertilizer this time of year is not the time of year. If it's not a fall fertilizer, don't worry about it. If you want to use a fall fertilizer, it is going to improve things and help it kind of come back quicker and stronger next spring. All right, thanks a lot, Perry. More great ideas on how to make your yard the showpiece of the neighborhood. Check out Ellerslie Gift and Garden. They're located on the corner of Ellerslie Road and Calgary Trail. More information, there is a phone number for you. You can also uh, catch them online, and they do have a Twitter handle.